back in this castle. I am just visiting, you know. It says a great deal for King Robert that he will even allow me to visit after all the trouble I have caused. I did not mean to cause any trouble. I thought all would be well when I married Alexander, my second husband. He was so attentive and charming at first. Dreadful mistake it turned out to be, and now I have the reputation of a woman who causes trouble wherever she goes. Well, it was not my fault. <laughs> Maybe I should begin at the beginning. I am Euphemia, Countess of Ross and Buchan, born in Rossshire in the north. And there was even trouble in the year I was born. 1346, there was a battle at Neville's Cross with a terrible outcome. King David and some of the Earls of Scotland were captured and they were taken south. King David himself was imprisoned in the Tower of London. And talks went on for years about money for a ransom to bring him home. Oh, that was bad enough. But when I was three, the pest, the black pest, came to Scotland. And it was the worst one anyone can remember. They called it black because if you got it, you could bleed from the inside out. And the blood turned your skin black. You'd be dead within 24 hours. They told me all about it. I still worry when I cough. Coughing can be the first sign of it, you know. With King David away, my uncle Robert looked after the country. He's married to my aunt Euphemia. I'm named after her. But at last, when I was 11, King David was released for such a fortune. Nearly 67,000 pounds. How could such an enormous sum be met? Well, the nobles had to pay their share, so did the Bajessas in the towns. Fortunately, they were doing so well with their fields of wool that they could contribute. But the ransom money led to my next trouble, and I was right in the middle of it. The king said that my father, William Earl of Ross, had not paid proper homage and not given enough money. So the king punished my father. He took away some of his land and his right to choose a husband for me, his only child. Oh, how well I remember how angry my father was. The king brought me here to this castle and said that I was to marry one of his bravest knights, Sir Walter Leslie. Now, how can a young girl argue with the king? Walter was older than me. I liked him. <coughs> there was no strong feeling between us. But a girl must have a protector. Walter was brave and skillful. I thought I could be happy with him, as with anyone. And I looked forward to a family of my own. We were married when I was 20. And the year after, King David started to build the tower, David's tower, right here in the castle on the east side. I believe that it was his time in the Tower of London, so far from home, that made him decide to build the grandest tower in Scotland right here, so that nothing like that could ever happen again. What a task it was King Robert had to finish it. Walls were eight feet thick, rising slowly to over 100 feet high. People from miles around watched it grow. Strong rooms on the ground floor. You'd have no chance of getting past the guards there. The great wall above and then the bed chambers on the top. And at right angles a separate building for the kitchens and the pantry with the dungeons underneath. Oh, you would not want to be in there. So wet and slimy. I heard that the king did not always send the ransom money regularly to England, and that is how he could afford to build such a grand tower. I went to look for it today. I found it, but it looked so different I could not recognise it. Why can I only find the dungeons? Maybe if you go and look, you'll find more than I did. Life at this castle went on, all around the building of the tower, and the knights, like my husband, practiced their skills. Oh, the tournaments just below the castle were such fun, so splendid and colourful. The men would show off their tilting, jousting, sword play and archery. Walter would ride up to me and I'd give him my silk scarf, my favour, and then everyone would know that he rode for me. But being a 
the night is serious. You have to make promises and you have to keep them. Only the king can make you a knight forever, but I can make you a knight for the day. Are there any brave young men who would like to come forward to be a knight for the day? Then people will do what you want for a day if you become a knight. Do I have anyone brave who wants to become a knight for the day? No volunteers? <laughs> I will tell you then just what the knight promises, so you know what a knight would have to do. The knight had to say, I promise to defend the Christian religion, to be loyal and true to the king, not to leave the king in trouble or battle, to defend the realm and justice and the ladies of honour, to help the law against murderers and traitors, to support the noble estate of chivalry with my horse and my weapons, and to learn how to be a courageous knight. That is what all the knights had to promise. Now our men are so busy practicing their arts of war that they do not spend much time with us women, so we women have to amuse ourselves. I'm good at weaving and embroidery, and I play backgammon and chess. And we all love riddles. Let me see how clever you are. See if you can guess my riddles. Oh, the first one is so easy. Even the children will know this one. What am I? Multicolored in hue, I flee the sky and the deep earth. There is no place for me on the ground or in any part of the poles. No one fears an exile as cruel as mine. But I make the world grow green with my rainy tears. Do you know what he says? Any guesses? Mm -hmm. The last bit that gives it away, I make the world grow green with my rainy tears. It's a cloud. What do you think it is? A cloud. Yes, it's a cloud. Very good. Now this is one for the adults. It's a little bit longer, so listen carefully. I'm a strange creature for I satisfy women. I grow very tall, erect in a bed, and I'm hairy underneath. From time to time, a beautiful girl, a brave daughter, some fellow, dares to hold me, grips my reddish skin, rubs me in my head, and puts me in the pantry. Now, once that girl with plaited hair who has confined me remembers our meeting, her eye moistens. Do you know what it is? Anyone know? She puts it in the pantry, and then when she thinks about it, the tears come to her eyes. Yeah. An onion! Well done! Yes, it is an onion. We ate well in King David's time. Beef, pork, venison and fish. And I do remember that hedgehog pie was a particular favourite with onions. I have a sweet tooth though. My favourite dish is apples baked with honey. So we ate well and for a while we could forget that riddle that everyone knows. What makes bitter things sweet? Do you know this one? What makes bitter things sweet? Any of them? Well, you might think the answer is honey, but it is not. The answer is hunger. Hunger makes bitter things sweet. How fortunate we are when we do not know hunger. Now my settled life here was to change. If you come back in 15 minutes, after you have gone to find David's tower, I will tell you how I became known as a woman who always brings trouble. But for now, I bid you farewell. Thank you very much, Sir Walter Leslie. That is before I was known as a woman who always brings trouble. More of that later. So, it was in this castle too that we ate and we drank, we feasted until in, right into the night and we listened to music, and then when everything was cleared away, we ladies would show off our beautiful costumes in the dance. Now, I spent when you dance, you dance to music. Is that right? Yes, yeah. nodding, yes, so do we. And sometimes we use poetry to give us the rhythm of the dance. And of course a poem tells a story. Oh, here is a very short one, and it was one of King David's favourites. 
a crusader has returned from the war, and he's welcomed by another knight. Before his eyes, the crusader saw a town burnt to the ground, and he cannot get that picture out of his head. Now this is a point for the chorus, and I cannot do this by myself, I will need your help with the chorus. So please say after me, Gracious Lady, Heavenly Star, Gracious Lady, Heavenly Star, Help us when we travel far. Help us when we travel far. We are all asking Mary to help us on our journey. So please remember that and say it with me when I say chorus. And now for the dance. This is the simplest dance that we do. It is a round dance, performed in a circle. We join hands like this, and we move to the left in the rhythm of the poetry. And then on the chorus, we just mark time with our feet. Gracious lady, heavenly star, help us when we travel far. So put down your bag, give a hand to each of your neighbours. The bigger the circle in the great hall, the better the dance. <laughs> Just waiting for a real love, he said. 
and in these difficult times I needed protection, he said. Oh, it was so expecting. Always had this fearless band of Highland men with him. I knew he could look after me. And King Robert was so pleased with the idea. Oh, I was quite swept away by Alexander's charm. And how wrong I was. After the wedding, I learned that there was a reason why Alexander had not married, and the reason was called Mariota. He loved another, but she's not of our rank or breeding, so he could not marry her. Kept her secretly away all these years. I didn't know what to do. I had no idea. But what happened was that I managed eventually to spend more and more time away from Alexander. So, what was I to do? They had five sons and I knew nothing about it. And eventually, of course, I had to leave him. Now, the time that I spent up in Dingwall was a very special time to me with my children. And it was very sad that with Alexander later on, I had to lose him. So, I spent time there and <coughs> When I was on my own, I had to think about people who had been great, and I remembered Isabella, who had been so great. Now, I am the second countess of Buckingham through my marriage to Alexander, and Isabella was the first countess of Buckingham. She who rode through the night to put the crown on the head of Robert the Bruce. Now, Isabella knew that it was her brother's right to crown the king, but her brother was in England. So Isabella rode to do it, missing the first coronation, but insisting that they do it all over again so she could put the crown on the king's head. She never returned to John Comyn, her husband, after that. She always supported Robert the Bruce. Eventually, Isabella was captured. And they put her in a cage, and they hung the cage over the walls at Berwick. Now can you imagine the horror of that, the shame, the cold, when the wind blew high on those castle walls? It was so sad that Isabella spent all that time in the cage, two years, and the cage made of wood and iron. Some of her women brought her food, otherwise she would have starved. So, who could save her? Well, at first, only John come in her husband, and he would not, because Isabella had left him to support Robert the Bruce. Could Robert the Bruce not save her? Not until after the famous victory at Bannockburn in 1314. And then he could not find her. Maybe she was living secretly in a nunnery somewhere. Maybe she was dead. Robert the Bruce never found out, and neither will we. Such a spirited woman, Isabella. If you go and see the Honest of Scotland, you will see Isabella crowning the king. So Isabella inspired me. But when I was abused by Alexander, what happened in the end, how could anyone help me? Who could I go to? I went to the church, I spoke to the Bishop of Murray, and he said he would speak to Alexander for me. And some very plain speaking must have gone on, because Alexander promised to give up Mariota and to return to me. But, my husband had an old score to settle with the Bishop of Murray, and he took his wild wicked healing men and he wrote to Forest. He burned the town and the church. And then he went on to Eldin and burned the cathedral and the houses of some of the clergy and some of the town as well. So many people suffered. It was said that that was his revenge for my asking for help from the church. But I heard that there was a matter of money involved in it too. Whatever the truth of it, and I may never know, I got the blame for it. I had no alternative. I appealed to the Pope for a divorce, which I got. And I will never, ever forget the words that were said at 
the time. Her marriage, her marriage has been the cause of wars, plundering, arson, murders, and many other damages and scandals. And it is likely that more will happen if they remain united. So you see now how I became known as a woman who always brings trouble. But life is not fair, is it? That I have learnt. All I want to do now is to spend the rest of my days in peace. And I hope others will allow me to do so. I have had enough trouble to last for the whole of my life. So go and find Isabella frowning the kiss. I wish you a good day and I bid you farewell.